For many, winter is a very dull and drab time, and it holds little to no excitement. But for others who ski, winter is one of the most enjoyable times of the year. Now, I've been seriously skiing for about six years now, and for me, I look forward to winter and to be able to get on the slopes. But when I did start, there were some things that I wish I had a little more knowledge on. And I'm hoping, if you're interested in starting up skiing, I'm hoping to share some of that knowledge with you. Now, one of the first things we're going to look at for a beginning skiing is you definitely need the proper equipment. Now, we all know you need boots, bindings, skis, and possibly poles. But we're going to focus on some of the other equipment today. First thing you have to worry about is getting a good base layer. Now, a base layer is uh, what you put on first, and its main purposes are to insulate and to wick away moisture. <laughs> and your uh, base layer should be made out of uh, some sort of polyester blend, because this will breathe better than your cottons, and it will also keep out the moisture. Once you've uh, got the base layer taken care of, you can uh, move on to the ski pants. Now, uh, Vic Husted is a uh, professional ski instructor and he's going to help kind of demonstrate some of this for me today. And he's wearing his ski pants right now. Now, <laughs> ski pants, uh, main responsibilities aren't to insulate. That is what your base layer is for. Your ski pants are for keeping away wind and snow. So you want them to be relatively thin. You also would probably want them to have pockets because many ski pants do not come with pockets. Mix come with an impressive eight pockets. There are various ski memorabilia and whatnot. And also, along with the pants, you're going to need a coat. Now, the one Rick has is also quite thin, because you might think, well, wouldn't you need a very warm coat to insulate? No, once again, that is the job of your base layer, so make sure you have a good one. But you do want it uh, kind of baggy enough, so if you want to put on a vest like mine, or possibly a fleece from Old Navy or whatnot, <laughs> you can uh, put that on under the coat and still have enough room to move around comfortably. Also, you want to keep in mind you want a good pair of ski socks. Now, many people think, well, you know, maybe I should wear two or three pairs of socks. This is a myth, my friends. <laughs> you want to only one good pair of ski socks. And I would recommend actually going out and buying socks that are actually ski socks. I know you might think socks are socks, but these are specifically designed to breathe well and keep you warm. Now, another vital part to your skiing experience will be the gloves. Now, I recommend investing in a good pair of skiing gloves because they have a reinforced uh, palm area right here. And this is very crucial because many people use a rope toe when they begin. And a rope toe is just a rope that you're going to hold on to that brings you up the hill. And, that's, and they can easily tear other gloves. And if you don't want to go out and get ski gloves, I recommend that you get a uh, rope toe guard, which is just a little leather strap you're going to put around your regular gloves so they don't rip and you pull up. And it's definitely a good idea to bring two pairs of gloves because you do not want to rip one pair on the rope toe and then that be the end of your skiing even though you paid for a full day's pass. Also, you're, one of going, you're one of going to want to get a good pair of ski goggles. Now, in Michigan, don't go for the mirrored ski goggles. Those actually are more of a sunglasses and they're used in California more. In Michigan, <laughs> you, uh, you're going to want to get either a clear or gray tint for your goggles because Michigan is more cloudy and whatnot. So. You also want to make sure they have some sort of fog-resistant technology. Now, this right here has a vent on it. So if you get too warmed up and it starts fogging up in your glasses, you move the vent, it lets the moisture out and kind of cools you off. So you definitely want something like that. You also, if you plan on wearing a helmet, you're going to want to have some sort of strap in the back that connects like that. 
And this, now we move on to the head here. Many skiers wear just a regular hat like this, and you know it keeps you warm, but it's probably a better idea to wear a helmet such as the one Rick is wearing. Now the helmet keeps you as warm, if not warmer, than your standard hat. And it's also, of course, very necessary for protection. Now, the one Rick has on right now is uh, one that you can pick up at uh, a ski specialties shop. They are a little expensive, but I would recommend investing in one. The only downside is you look a little ridiculous at times. No matter what other people think. And if you're going backcountry skiing, which is skiing outside of a ski resort, you're going to want to have a good backpack, and in this backpack, you're going to want a collapsible shovel. Now, the reason for this is if you're skiing with friends, you want to be able to dig them out if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> and necessarily in Michigan, this isn't a major thing, but in places like Mount Bohemia in the UP, you're going to want to have one of these, definitely, because this could be a real lifesaver. And I recommend investing in one like this that is collapsible, so you can easily put it in your backpack and then dig your friends out if necessary. <laughs> now that we've got some of the basics for equipment down, we're going to talk a little about uh, some proper technique when you're beginning skiing. Now, when you first begin skiing, you shouldn't start out on the uh, double black diamonds like me and Rick. <laughs> you should first start out on the bunny slopes. And I know it sounds a little wimpy and whatnot, but do not start out with more than you're comfortable with. I sort of made that mistake, and I almost tore my ACL. <laughs> and you're going to want to start at the bunny hills. And bunny hills have a rope toe that we talked about earlier that pulls you up. And you are going to need poles at this point because it's going to be too much in your hands, so don't even worry about poles at this point. But you're going to, in the front here, you're going to take an athletic stance, feet about shoulder length apart, kind of bend the knees slightly, and you're going to lightly grab onto the toe rope. Now you're going to increase the velocity of your grip more and more until you're gripping the rope tightly, tight enough that it's going to start pulling you up. Now, the rope toe is very frustrating for beginners at first, almost more than actually going down the hill because they're either falling forwards or falling backwards or they're running into people. Just uh, don't lose hope. Just kind of like grab on tight, keep to the proper stance, don't run too far back or forward or you are going to fall back or forward. And once you uh, are ready to let go of the rope, you're going to need, need to know how to turn. Now, keeping your athletic stance, all you're going to do to turn is Lightly move your ankles. Now, you don't want to throw your body into this movement, like, you know, like this. <laughs> Otherwise, then you're just going to end up tumbling down the hill. You want to keep just very slight movements. It doesn't take too much to get you turning. And then you're going to head down the hill. And to stop, you're going to invert your feet like so, making a little triangle with the top of your skis, and this will eventually slow you down. And also, another thing to keep in mind while you're going down the hill is even though you don't have poles and it might look kind of silly, keep your hands like this, because this will help you keep your balance. 